Uh, here we are on our way uh, now down in uh, one of the most beautiful and spectacular canyons in Guatemala, leading from Alta Verapaz or the highlands of Alta Verapaz down the Polochic uh, Canyon to the Polochic Valley uh, to visit a uh, the Chulac Plantation, uh, where we were asked to uh, help them uh, build a school, and so. Uh, here we are uh, going down this canyon on rough roads. Uh, take uh, three, four, five hours to get there depending on the weather. And here we are coming into the place and just listen to uh, one of my favorite songs as we're going in here. So here we are arriving at the school, which uh, the foundation helped them build in 1990, uh, a two-room classroom. Uh, we then went to work uh, in trying to uh, get the, the government to uh, uh, to provide teachers, and it just wasn't possible uh, during 1991, and so we employed a young man uh, to do the teaching. Our representative there is Rafael that you see here, Rafael Maas, who is also the LDS, uh, one of the LDS branch presidents in the area. So here's our teacher, Lorenzo Chub, uh, who is from a nearby community of Pansos, but spends his week uh, living uh, at Chulac and teaching uh, the grade school children in the morning and the uh, in fact, he teaches the, them in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, we actually need two teachers here. Uh, need a bit more furniture and another teacher. Uh, we have committed ourselves to, uh, to helping them uh, through 1992, and then we hope that in 93 the government will take over. Uh, you see here a uh, foundation generator. Uh, some of the work that uh, that we do. I uh, sometimes go on my own, sometimes to, uh, bring it with me, a, a team of my uh, carpenters from Valparaiso uh, to help to do this work. And of course, most of the construction has been done by the people themselves uh, at Chulac. And this uh, portion of Chulac is called Tseokok. Uh, the tools that are used, the sander, the saber saw, and others are my own equipment, as is the car that I travel in. Um, in it also the uh, television and uh, some of the other equipment is, is mine. Uh, but so we uh, not only uh, tell them they're supposed to work, but we work along with them. Uh, in fact, the harder and the dirtier the, work, the task is, uh, the more important it is that we uh, uh, work along with them in doing it. Uh, this is a, uh, we also have an agricultural project uh, at uh, Seokok, 
uh, on the Chulak Plantation. I should mention that Chulak Plantation is a cooperative plantation. Uh, it's coffee, mainly, is the pro uh, commercial produ production of it. Uh, it was established by Germans uh, at the turn of the century, uh, but then confiscated by the government in, at the time of the Second World War because there was a lot of Nazi sympathies uh, among uh, uh, the Germans in the area uh, that at two different times had colonized in this part of Guatemala. Uh, and so it became a government plantation and eventually was turned into cooperative uh, for years run by government managers that were assigned, but they uh, uh, mismanaged it and would always uh, leave it deeper in debt. And so the Indians have now become independent in an effort to uh, uh, pay their debts and to shape up their business. Uh, in addition to agricultural experimentation, we uh, uh, of course show uh, video movies. Uh, these happen to be Christian education videos. Uh, that were purchased in the United States uh, have English soundtracks, but uh, my wife and me uh, have uh, redone them into, in, with a Spanish soundtrack. Uh, and so these are shown uh, along with uh, Good Life movies uh, in all of these areas where, where we are working. And once in a while we throw in a commercial movie uh, that has real educational value. Here you see one of the civil defense group uh, armed and with his old World War I uh, rifle. Uh, and so there are the people of Seacoco. Now we're going up over uh, that were even neater uh, than those at Seacoco. These are Indians at a village called Sajonte. Uh, and they were a group of Indians that were uh, really working hard to solve their own problems. Uh, they had scrounged some materials and built their own one-room schoolroom. Uh, and then they needed a teacher. And there was a young man from the plantation that was employed by the government in a literacy program uh, that worked afternoons teaching literacy to the adults. And he volunteered to teach the grade school in the mornings without any charge, uh, without any wage. Here we are going through the market uh, at uh, Chulak, which is held every Wednesday. Merchants uh, come in, bring things to sell to the Indians. Of course, here I know many people. Uh, as I worked here uh, intensively for about about two years uh, as uh, district president of the LDS Church uh, back about 12 years ago. Here we are. Uh, we're up on the pass, uh, uh, looking down into the. Uh, valley where the Calbon River runs. Here we're seeing the civil defense fortification. Um, but down, uh, down into the valley uh, is where we'll be going now. Uh, and it's down in this valley where the uh, big dam was going to be built for the Chul Chul Chulak Hydroelectric Project. This is where uh, the Electrification Institute had their colony of engineers and workers. Um, doing all the preliminary work for this big hydroelectric project which was then suspended because of lack of funds and other problems. We hope that someday it will uh, uh, soon be, uh, be uh, done again or they'll go to work on it again and, and it'll be possible because Guatemala needs the electricity uh, that will be generated by it and these people certainly need some work. Uh, and so here we're, we're looking down into the valley we're seeing a little bit of the river and, and some of the very isolated village areas, which are very common in Guatemala. Is 80% of Guatemalans Indians live uh, in isolated rural areas. So here we are at the school uh, with the teacher, Santiago Ical. He's adding up uh, the number of students that he has. Uh, it looks like he's going to come out with 66 students uh, in the uh, grade school level. Uh, and so here you see the, the, the second grade group, and here the first grade group, and then back behind is the kindergarten group. So he has them all in one room, and sort of just moves from one group to the other, as he's explaining here. And it's a little confusing, but uh, uh, he, uh, he's doing his best. And he worked for three years without a wage doing this. 
But this year, uh, in 1991, the uh, literacy program was uh, was dropped, and so he didn't have a job anymore, and he couldn't keep doing everything for nothing. And so we, as a foundation, agreed to pay him a wage. Um, and so here he is in the afternoons teaching uh, literacy classes. He has these women uh, for an hour or so, and then later on, uh, after working hours, the men come and, uh, and have their literacy class. And so he uh, is a foundation employee. He was through 1991, and he will be again in 1992. And uh, in the meantime, we will be working uh, uh, with the government in, in hopes of influencing them to provide teachers for these two schools uh, in the future. So there you uh, heard some of the uh, some of the dialect, the Kekchi dialect from uh, this area. Kekchi is one of the major dialects of the country, one of the four major dialects. And so here you see these very fine people that. Uh, uh, on this particular visit, I uh, invited my wife and me to have lunch. Uh, they're talking in Kekchi, and we'll ask, we'll get a translation in Spanish. I'm grateful for me having come and for uh, the films that I bring. Uh, these things are a help to them because they uh, are not very educated. This helps, will help them improve their lives. My wife has to uh, say something in Kekchi, where she is a native Kekchi speaker. And I don't know what she's saying. I think she's telling them that they've got to work together as a group, as a community, <laughs> to solve their problems. So there we're going to have lunch. Here is the uh, foundation representative in the village, uh, Pedro Maquin, who is uh, uh, the branch president of the LDS branch on this side of the mountain, too. Uh, and uh, he's explaining, uh, and his uh, father-in-law also explained before him that they have need of uh, our help in building a new school. My wife is talking to Santiago, our teacher, telling him that he will be greatly blessed by the Lord for what he's doing in helping the children. He's been at this for four years and he says he's very pleased with uh, his work. Here we are with the uh, group in the school uh, on this particular occasion. Uh, uh, Showing them uh, a video movie. A Christian education video. Now we're, we're back uh, at the school in uh, Seokok on the other side of the mountain. Uh, uh, just before I left for the States uh, with my family this year and we're seeing the new construction that we're adding on to the school building. Um, Eventually, there, there's enough land here to build additional classrooms uh, when it's warranted one day. These are the uh, two rooms being built. One will be a sleeping room for the teachers, and the other one here a kitchen for the school lunch program. Uh, supply for which I am now going to unload here that I brought from uh, Patricia. So here I am unloading uh, supplies. Uh, few uh, construction materials and then uh, mainly, uh, well there's two other items, there's uh, uh, food uh, from the school lunch, for the school lunch program uh, and then uh, educational uh, materials. Uh, and so half of it goes here and half is going to go on to the other side of the mountain. The 
uh, food supplement uh, materials that we uh, food that we get uh, is uh, acquired by uh, Umberto and Patricia. I think I've already mentioned that. Uh, the educational materials here, of course, are purchased by the foundation. These things are readily available in the country, and uh, on U.S. terms, they're really quite cheap. Uh, you can't buy these things cheaper uh, in the United States. Uh, and so it's, uh, the way to go is not to buy these things here and take them to Guatemala, but, uh, but, but rather donate money to the foundation and we can purchase all of these things down there much cheaper. Here we are over at Sajon Day again, uh, unloading the materials. And here you can see how I uh, carry the television and uh, loudspeakers and uh, uh, VCR and, uh, and equipment uh, uh, to the school there uh, into all rural areas. So here we are in the school, uh, seeing the uh, food uh, that I brought them, uh, uh, soybean cookies and uh, oats, rolled oats, and there's a uh, medicine uh, with which we will deworm all of the children uh, at the school. Uh, they provided uh, some of the money, they got all, they surrounded up all they could, and then we provided the balance to get that worm medicine. On this day, we're uh, specializing on uh, giving, uh, showing a video, uh, helping them understand how to avoid cholera. Uh, which is, is a big scare in Guatemala at the time, uh, at this present time, and uh, which uh, a few cases of which have uh, been discovered in, in the country. And so uh, before I came to the States, uh, uh, we uh, made a round of all the areas we work in and showed them movies uh, to pr how to prevent cholera. And here you can see, of course, there's a few uh, LDS missionaries that are... Uh, little afternoon fireside on cholera. We're passing out the foundation uh, newsletter. Uh, we pr uh, produce one of these every month in Guatemala and distribute in all project areas, uh, specializing in the good life principles. And so there's 10 of them produced a year, specializing in each of the 10 good life principles. Now we're back at the, uh, the school, uh, the preschool in uh, in uh, Valparaiso, and we're uh, uh, giving them uh, a lunch. Uh, once a, a week, Marilena and her teachers uh, uh, provide uh, a lunch for, for all of the children. Uh, here's the prayer. Amen. Last of all, we're going to uh, observe uh, the community education program as it functions at uh, Valparaiso, and it does, uh, and it's similar in other areas. Uh, all of the children and young people that receive help uh, from the foundation are expected to show up on Saturday morning and put a couple of hours in in uh, community improvement projects. Uh, at Valparaiso, part of uh, what they do is to help us in agricultural experimentation and actually uh, what they're doing uh, it, it makes them sort of members of like a, a garden co-op because they actually uh, share in the harvest. And so here you see them uh, weeding and harvesting uh, vegetables from our fairly large vegetable garden. Here we uh, experiment with uh, improved seeds and crops from around the country. Uh, and uh, we have especially been working for the last three and a half years in uh, corn experimentation, uh, a project uh, designed to improve the uh, local, one of the local varieties of corn uh, and cross it with another uh, variety of corn that we found works good in the area and which we have also improved. And so uh, this is a very important project. 
Uh, here uh, we are working towards producing the corn that has uh, two or three or even four ears per plant rather than the traditional one. And we have already uh, got it up to 44% of the stocks now have uh, two or more ears per plant rather than the traditional uh, one. And so we're really making progress there and it's really exciting uh, to, uh, to see the, these corn experiments uh, as each year we, we just uh, improve another 10 or 15 percent and eventually we think this is going to be a great blessing to, uh, to the people in, in this area. Eventually we're going to get this going uh, in all areas that we're working in. But here you see the kids uh, that turned up uh, to work uh, this particular morning and some of the vegetables they harvested, the carrots that they're uh, chewing on. Of course we have a lot of fun uh, working with them too. Uh, oftentimes we have, uh, uh, we go swimming together afterwards. Uh, uh, we're also building a basketball court so we'll eventually do a little uh, basketball every day and uh, and of course they they share in in the harvest as true partners uh, one squash doesn't look like a lot but eventually they'll get more and they'll go home with a whole armful which they do uh, at least once a week and sometimes twice a week <laughs> So those that participate continue to receive our help. Those who uh, just don't want to uh, work together in community, uh, of course, eventually uh, uh, don't get our help. Of course, they get to watch a little TV afterwards, too, and then uh, oftentimes we have a little class with them, uh, uh, teaching them uh, uh, Christian education classes at Good Life Principles. And, uh, of course, uh, we uh, have a lot of fun with these kids, and we think that we're really making a lot of progress and getting somewhere. It would be well to finish this program by mentioning that your tax-deductible gift to the Foundation will make possible continuing and expanding this important work among needy Indians. It is a work that is not the typical Band-Aid treatment so common in many aid programs, but rather an effort in partnership with Indians themselves that effectively deals with the underlying causes of their problems. You can send your donation to the Foundation for Indian Development or the FID, Post Office Box 1395, Provo, Utah, zip code 84603. If you're interested in having more information, you can write to the Foundation Post Office Box uh, to Dr. C. Jess Grosbeck, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, or the Executive Director of the Foundation in the United States, Mr. Fred Bowman, or any of the trustees. Or you can write me, Cordell Anderson, at Apartado 67, Cuban, Alta Vera Paz, Guatemala. Uh, postal code there is 16001. And so we hope to be hearing from you soon.